International Relations at Wits University, Professor John Stremler. Professor Stremler, a very good morning to you. It's good to have you on the program. You know, as we've been saying, um, it, nobody, and Sophie was saying, nobody wishes COVID-19 on anyone. I heard Boris Johnson the other day saying, one person's cough can be another person's death knell. So we need to take it seriously. Having said that, this new development, in terms of a political game changer, you, you reckon it's a big one? Oh, yes, it's the most uh, prominent uh, political uh, case that was uh, imaginable right now. It's, uh, it's going to ripple through the campaign, of course. Uh, but it's important to keep in mind that uh, on, the, on the disease itself, that uh, Donald Trump is 74. Eight out of every 10 Americans who die of this disease are in that cohort of over 65. Mm. It nearly killed Berlusconi, the former uh, head of Italy, and as your uh, uh, correspondent Sophie mentioned, uh, Boris Johnson, but also in the U.S., Herman Cain, who yeah. ran um, and uh, for, for the Republican nomination as a close ally of Donald Trump, went to one of his rallies, and he ended up dying. So um, there is a real concern here that has been highlighted by the uh, uh, positive testing that Donald Trump and millennia have gone through. And apparently the super spreader was Hope Hicks. The, uh, the aide was very close to them and was flying on Air Force One together. Mm. Now, what um, this impacts on the campaign is, you know, it's only uh, a month from Tuesday, uh, this Tuesday, uh, away. And he, if he's going to be quarantined, that, that may mean the end of a second debate for sure. And, uh, and that would be probably a sense of relief after what we saw during the first one. <laughs> So that uh, we'll have to see, uh, of course, what um, what uh, uh, the, the implications, as, as Sophie was mentioning, yeah. there is a 25th Amendment under the U.S. Constitution, which allows for the replacement of a president uh, in the case of his, his incapacitation. But, of course, if Mike Pence is positive, then you've got a problem. So help us understand in terms of the line of succession. You have the president, you have Pence as the VP. Who's next? Is it the uh, Secretary of State, then the Speaker? Uh, well, it, 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 it tends to be the, the uh, Speaker of the House of Representatives. The, the Constitution is not terribly clear on, on, the, on the overall circumstances that prompt the secession. You know, the, 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 we hear a lot about the, the uh, Speaker of the House because there was anticipated to be a possible conflict over the voting results in the Electoral College. It gets very arcane, and the U.S. system is very different than the South African system in that regard because it is less straightforward. And, and the, the judiciary is, is more political, and the uh, weighting of the votes becomes uh, favorable to small rural states, unlike here, one person, one vote. And America, in that sense, isn't a full democracy uh, as, as we would understand it here in South Africa. And these are all going to be all these are all going to be become more and more apparent as uh, as we go forward. Help us get into the minds of Americans, American voters, especially Donald Trump supporters, um, and help us understand why masks. The, the vaccines have become such a political issue. They never should be. They never should be. And uh, uh, it is outrageous, frankly, that Donald Trump would politicize mask wearing when the scientists struggling to understand this new virus, mind you, just as we've been through here with all of the uh, confusion, but at least Cyril Ramaphosa defers to his scientists. And as we, as we heard during the first debate, Donald Trump seems to think that he has his own wisdom on this and he will pull ahead because he's the businessman and, it, and, and the disease does not really afflict his voters as much, or at least he thought in the start of the disease, that it was really limited to African Americans and to old people, of which he's one, but he doesn't concede that fact. And we'll see what happens with regard to his supporters. But it is, it is certainly the case that um, masks are essential both for um, protecting oneself, but more importantly, and as we first learned, uh, to protect your neighbor. Uh, yeah. and, and that kind of 
um, taking care of your neighbor is just antithetical to Donald Trump's view of the world. He is so self-centered. Do you think people who didn't believe in masks before will now change their behavior after this latest development with the, the president? Well, I think that the, 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 what you see in the states uh, is a partisanship that is uh, so polarized, uh, and those in the base uh, do, do tend to follow Donald Trump's lead. Now, there is obviously a contradiction here. What uh, Sophie was referring to, and it is really important to watch over the next few weeks, is there may be uh, some further movement uh, in, the, in the case of, of, of those who, who took a chance on Donald Trump in 2016, mm. who had formerly voted for Barack Obama. That's why Joe Biden went on his train trip through uh, Pennsylvania immediately after the first debate, because he's trying to remind voters there that Donald Trump has uh, sold them a false bill of goods, that, uh, that he is the rich kid who mounted the rhetoric, the demagoguery, if you will, of I'm, I'm, I'm the common man, and he's not. Uh, he's a privileged kid uh, who protects himself very well, uh, but but hopes to talk the rhetoric of being down in the in the in the streets with with uh, with his construction workers yeah. uh, who build his building. So it, consequently, I think you will see at the margin some erosion, further erosion. But bear in mind that Joe Biden has to win by a fairly large majority to overwhelm the electoral college and prevent Donald Trump from stealing this election, as he effectively threatened to do during the election, uh, during the debate. And, and electoral yeah. integrity, South Africans know, is critical. You know, some have uh, described uh, the last debate as, quote unquote, a hot mess. Uh, some even questioning whether there should be more between uh, Donald Trump and Joe Biden. This latest development might have something uh, to say about that. One of the big issues that came out of that last debate was that Trump didn't go hard enough on condemning white supremacist movement in the United States. The name that popped up was Proud Boys. And the quote was, stand back and stand by. And that can be interpreted in whichever way you care, you will, you know. Uh, so that has caused a lot of uh, consternation in America. Having said that, uh, how can Joe Biden use that going forward and one would say you know one should never ever capitalize on somebody's illness that should never happen but how do you think joe biden will use the fact that donald trump has has tested positive for covid 19 in his campaign do you, should he stay away from that do you think i don't think he has to go there and in fact if donald trump is quarantined there may not be a second debate but what there will be next week unless something uh, untoward happens to Mike Pence, who might, might well test positive, yeah. that is the current vice president. But if they have the debate, you will see a very different dynamic, and you will see uh, on display Kamala Harris, uh, the Indian, Jamaican, um, American lawyer and, and from California. Uh, uh, you'll have Mike Pence representing the rural Christian evangelical vote and block that has supported Donald Trump. And you will see the America more diverse, more representative of all of the people that Joe Biden argued for at the first debate on display in Kamala Harris. She is the future of an America that looks more like the diversity that it has become, more like South Africa, if you will. Uh, and therefore, you need a human rights constitution, much more so than you need a states' rights constitution, which the United States has. And the reform of the constitution may well be the issue after the dust settles from yeah. this uh, contentious election. Professor, always interesting getting your take on these matters. Uh, John Stremlock, be well. Thank you very much. All right, that was uh, Professor of International Relations at this University, John Stremlock.